Hello viewers and welcome to a brand new episode of Lancer 101. In this episode, we will be talking about the rules, specifically, the mech combat rules. To make it easier to watch, I will be separating the rules based on the category they belong to, and in today's episode, it will be movement. Hello, this is Dragon from the future. So, I found out that maybe the text to speech is a little too fast in this episode since I was experimenting with faster voice speed to make sure new players don't get bored from reading what is basically the rules. And since everything is in place already and I can't change any of it, if anyone found themselves unable to catch up to the voice, open up the English sub at the lower corner of the YouTube player here, which I actually properly write this time instead of letting YouTube automatic speech to text program to write it. Anyway, let's have the old me continues the rest of this video. So, you put your mech on the map, and on your turn, you will get one standard move, and a full action which can be split into two quick actions. The standard move, allows you to move your mech the number of spaces equal to your speed, even diagonally. You may also spend a quick action to use the boost action which works exactly the same but some traits, talents, and systems only work exclusively with boost action. When you move, you can actually split up the movement to use another action within it. Same goes for boost, and any other movements when it's possible. However, you must fully resolve the action before you can continue moving. When you are right next to, anything really, you count as being adjacent to said character or object. Adjacency has many uses, as being adjacent to a cover allows you to protect yourself better, and some traits, talents, and systems can provide benefit to adjacent character. However, this can also be bad in a way, as being adjacent to a hostile character makes both of you gain the engaged status. Any engaged characters will suffer plus one difficulty in any ranged attack, making melee attack the better choice. Oh, and when a character becomes engaged by a character of same or larger size during movement, they will immediately stop and lose any remaining movement. While you can just make another move action as normal to get away or move around after becoming engaged, this might trigger a reaction from the enemy. Do not suffer from said consequences, you can use the disengage action as a full action to ignore reaction and engagement until the end of your next turn, but since you probably won't be doing anything except running away this turn, this is not recommended. Sometimes, you might face obstruction in your way, these obstructions can be anything from terrain, object, or character, and as long as they are the same size or larger than you, it blocks your way. However, if you are bigger than them, you can just walk over them. But don't end your movement with anything occupying your space though, that's not allowed. Allies also won't be blocking your path, and you can't end your movement with them in your space either. Also, unmounted humans never count as obstruction. When you are being pulled, pushed, or knocked back by another character, this is called involuntary movement. This will force you to move in a straight line in a direction the other character wants unless specified otherwise, but when you get moved like this, you get to ignore engagement and reaction, and still get blocked by any obstruction in the way. One very special involuntary movement is falling. When you fall, either because you walked off a cliff or get pushed off a cliff, you fall at the rate of 10 spaces per round at the end of the current turn, and continue to fall at the end of each of your turn if you still haven't hit the ground. For every 3 spaces you fall you will take 3 kinetic AP damage, up to a maximum of 9. Sometimes, terrain can get bad, even hostile. Difficult terrain slows your mech speed down by half, essentially costing 2 spaces of movement for 1 space. Difficult terrain can be anything from swampy marshland, icy landscape, rocky scree, or, well, this. Dangerous terrain is where the ground is lava and is actively trying to murder you. When you end your turn on or move into the dangerous for the first time in a round, you must pass an engineering check or take 5 damage, kinetic, energy, explosive, or burn, depending on the hazard. You only need to make such a check for once per round. Need to move something, you can also drag another character or object up to twice your size but will be slowed when doing so. You may also lift a character or object equal or smaller than you but you will be immobilized instead. When dragging or lifting, you cannot perform any reactions. Instead of walking, you can also choose to jump in two different ways, jump horizontally, which let you move half your speed in a straight line and ignore any obstruction at ground levels, or jump vertically, which let you move up by space equal to your size and one space in any directions. For example, a size 2 character can jump two spaces up and land at one adjacent space. If you end jump in mid-air, you will fall at the end of the move immediately. You can also climb up a wall instead, costing you two spaces of movement per one space like difficult terrain. And if the terrain gets really bad, the GM might also make you pass a successful hull or agility check to climb up or fall instead. And if your mech has any special propulsion system, you could also get to fly. When flying, your mech could fly a space both horizontally and vertically up to your speed. For example, your mech has 6 speed and can fly, you can move 6 spaces away from your current location, including up to 6 spaces. However, you can only fly in a straight line and could only change direction with addition move action like boost. You must be able to reach the location physically too, like flying through a gap. When flying, you are immune to prone. But there's a ton of way to bring you down too, like being immobilized, stunned, or even just plain not moving, you know, because you need to generate lift from moving. You can also fall from taking structure damage or reactor stress and then fail the following agility check. On top of everything, 
you also should not fly above 10 spaces over any lands or buildings, as after being over 10 spaces high, you can only move or boost, not even reactions. You cannot fly above 10 spaces to avoid incoming attack either after you have finished an action. The only time this restriction doesn't apply is in zero-g condition and outside of mech combat. Speaking of zero-g, Lancer has mech combat rules for zero-g battle too. In zero gravity, underwater or, well, space, everybody can fly even if they don't have flight system installed. However, anybody that doesn't have it is slowed. Also, you can't fall in zero gravity because, you know, physics. Oh, and unless you are flying in zero-g condition, you won't be able to carry anything larger than size half when flying. Sometimes, you get an even more advanced form of flying, hover, which lets you move wherever the hell you want and not fall from the sky when not moving because you are hovering. Finally, when a mech gets really special, you can even teleport. When you teleport, you just pop into any free space within your speed or range. Teleportation ignores any obstruction, line of sight, engagement, and reaction. But there's a few flaws, first, you can only teleport into a space you could move on, so if you can't fly, you can not teleport into mid-air. Second, teleportation counts as movement, so it's still affected by conditions such as immobilized. Also, you totally can teleport into a space you cannot see, but if it's occupied, the teleportation fails. Well, that was the movement section of mech combat done. I would also like to thank Retrograde Minis for providing the amazing mech creator on the website which can be used to create your very own custom mech that I have used to its full potential here. There's also some Fantasy Realm stuff on the website too, link in the description. And with that all done, I will see you all next time.